Here, Colton Moore, I represent Northwest Georgia. How in the world 
can my friends that call themselves Democrats and champion themselves in criminal justice reform ignore the fact that half of the inmates at the Fulton County Jail have yet to be charged with a crime, and there are innocent people who are dying of in that facility. How in the world can the citizens of Fulton County demand justice and not get it when they see things like young thug and young slime going to the courtroom for a year? And yet to get through Von Dor and pick a jury, but yet this district attorney said she's going to take down these political prisoners in six months. Wow. Yeah. wow. The millions of dollars that are being spent both federally and through the state of Georgia and through local Fulton County tax dollars are funding this type of corruption. And what is so embarrassing, what is so embarrassing is Congress has gotten a head start in investigating yeah. and defunding Fonnie Willis way further ahead than we are here in the Georgia legislature. Very embarrassing. We need change. You know, what's also embarrassing is that our governor says that we have election integrity and then a week later is caught on hidden camera saying that any machine can be hacked. Right, right. Furthermore embarrassing, is that my fellow Senate colleagues in their letter to their constituents, they say that a special session is a waste of taxpayer money. Well, my constituents believe Fine Willis is a waste of taxpayer money. Those same senators also said 72 hours after the governor says that any machine can be hacked, they say that we are the number one state for election integrity. Oh. It's unbelievable. What's also unbelievable is the constitutional crisis that we are in. When I talk to my fellow senator and they are afraid to speak out because they are worried that they are going to find themselves in the crosshairs of this rogue district attorney. What happened to checks and balances? What happened to separation of powers? You see, those senators, they're duly elected to represent the 200,000 people that they represent. But those 200,000 people are being disenfranchised in our republic because their senators have cowered down. My friends, I ask that we go forward and continue putting pressure on these legislators because the legislative branch is the saving grace. But it cannot take advantage of its extraordinary constitutional power until we are in session. That's right. And I'm, I'm going to be open to any questions and all questions, but I have a few people, a few Georgians, who would like to say a few words. Okay. I want to start with you, Bruce Lavelle. Okay. All right, Bruce. <laughs> it's, uh, really an honor to it's really hard to come behind a young Is this guy incredible? Yeah. 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 It's so incredible. Listen, I, I'm here on behalf of representing two close friends of mine. Um, Georgia is a friend of mine, and of course, y'all yes, know Donald John Trump is a very close friend also. So that, that in that order, and let me tell you why. I'm a four-generation Georgian, and when I look around, and I, I've been blessed to travel the world. My father was a retired sergeant major. He went on to the Lord. He's from Newton, Georgia. We traveled this great world, and I was privileged to go to the Far East, the Middle East, as well as this great nation. And it's sad to see what's happening in this great nation. And I say that because we were the city that landed the Olympics, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that. We were a city that was too busy to hate. Listen, listen carefully. Too busy to hate, meaning Democrats and Republicans came together. You know, my, my business here for 30 years, some of the news people, y'all know me for years. Y'all know my character. Everybody knows the Lavelles, okay? So when I come up here and speak about our great state of Georgia, I'm very passionate about it. I showed up to this town with $34, and I met Mayor Jackson in the restroom at Cyclorama. Here's the true story. At the urinals. Yes. At the urinals. Yes. And he looked over. I said, wow, Mayor Jackson. I was invited to the Atlanta Association of Black Journalism. Yes, the conservative. Yes, remember? Republicans, Democrats got along. OK? And he says, you know, now's the time to build a business, a black business especially. 1994, I had my ribbon cutting. Six years later, I was a millionaire. Yeah. And, that, and so, I, thank you. 
So when I see all the chaos, when I saw the beautiful Atlanta we're about to lose through the riots and all the other things and all the craziness going on, we watch TV, we see what's going on in San Francisco, Oakland, New York, and all across the country, ladies and gentlemen. But let me tell you something. We're not short from the same thing they're going through. And how it starts right now, we have a DA right now who was born in Inglewood, California, who was predominantly raised in Washington, D.C. Now listen carefully, guys. And the reason why we're here right now having this conference, and the reason why we're where we're at now, is because we have both sides of the aisle. Watch this. Channel 2, listen carefully. That both sides of the aisle are infected with pay-to-play and special interest. <laughs> Govern when you owe favors, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? That's why you have a close friend of mine named Donald John Trump, who's in 60% polling right now out of all the craziness that's going on. Because he made an oath and he keeps constantly saying, I don't want your money, I don't need your money, I just want to do what's right for you. From the state house to the state senate to the Congress to state to uh, U.S. Senate to the governor's mansion, all the way down to county commission to the dog catcher. Listen carefully. The next ballot election, the next election we have, ladies and gentlemen, pick that person, he or she, that's not tied to special interests. Yeah. It's very important yeah. because this is why we're in this, this mess right now. And where I'm going with this, Mallory, hook me when I'm ready. When you're ready, 92 percent. Uh, Fonnie Willis's funding comes from 44 states out of this country. Wow. That means only 8% are fundraising in this community. What does that tell you right there? You know, know. Now, guys, this is serious. Two years ago, I covered with Fox News. I went down to University Boulevard, and I and I and this Wendy's was still smoldering. They burnt it to the ground. Y'all know what happened. All of these outsiders came in. I spent three hours on the ground talking to the local people because I used to mentor Carver High School down the road, along with Harper I Hartra High School, so I know this community. Yes, and they said, well, uh, Mr. Bella, they, we didn't do this. These other people come from all over burning this down. Right, and y'all right. know who burned that Wendy's down. Yeah. Y'all know who did. Yeah. They look like us. They, they look like me. No. no. So here we are. And by the grace of God, we, we Atlanta was saved because some few courageous conservatives stepped in and said enough is enough. There is no protesting at 11, 12 o'clock at night, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I have never seen that. Okay. And the reason why we had that is because we allowed wokeness to come inside our great city, the city that was too busy to hate. Listen carefully. That's why we had a one-term one Atlanta mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, that invited all the silliness in. That four-year-old was murdered, killed, and many others. But I say this. Instead of going on a witch hunt on a perfect phone call, Ladies and gentlemen, we have never had an election in the nation's history where the country was shut down and said, we'll just send you a mail-in ballot. Oh, Come on, somebody. All the military people in this room, including my dad, all my uncles who served from Korea, World War II, all the way to Vietnam, the absentee ballot was designed for the military soldier and the people who were in the <laughs> So when you're an incumbent president like Donald John Trump, who won more votes than the previous before, yeah. I am one of those 80 plus million voters that you and everyone watching this that represent this great movement. And you come in here and say, well, wait a minute. I got more votes. Let me call up some folks and question the election. Okay? Challenge the election. Ask questions. You have mail-in ballots. My father had a mail-in ballot. He's been dead four years. Uh -oh. How did that get mailed to me? Come on, somebody. So you're going to tell me that the nation has never shut down in the history. Okay? We all agree to that. We also know that Mark Zuckerberg pushed $400 million. Watch this, everybody that prioritize mail-in drop boxes, oh, yeah. Fulton, DeKalb, oh, yeah. Grant, Clayton. Yeah. Were they accompanied? Were they supervised? You're going to tell me if you won the lottery, and I said, well, I'll just put it in the mail. 
No, you will kill yourself to come down there and get that lottery ticket. So to play around with a precious ballot, and it was just flowing around everywhere, it's, it's okay to challenge the election. Ladies and gentlemen, the election was over. Let me call Brad up. Brad, I know I won. I know there's 11,000. Go back and look. That's called questioning. That's called asking questions. When I think about that, I think about the, the, the great Reverend A.D. King. That was my sister, Alveda King's daddy, who started the movement, ladies and gentlemen. It started with Kentucky, okay, on housing. And all during that tenure, my uncles, who was Dr. Nolan Bell, had a church down here on Second Avenue, who all marched in the SCLC, who all marched to say, hey, we want to vote. And to get persecuted and to be have their truck blown up, have their houses threatened, their family threatened, that's voter suppression, ladies and gentlemen. That's voter suppression. But here we are now. Here we are now. A sitting U.S. president can't call and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something's not right here. That's a fair thing to do. But then you have a DA that runs on a campaign, I'm going to get Trump. I'm going to get Trump. Now listen carefully, guys. I'm going to get, you have a DA saying they're going to run on a platform to get, what if that was you? Which yeah. Rudy Giuliani, a good friend of mine, known him for years, sat on that courthouse steps and he told you, whether you vote Democrat, Republican or not, this pendulum swings, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And this could be you. This could be your cousin. This could be your brother. This could be your mother. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And if we can't, as a nation, question our precious voting processes, who are we to judge other countries? Who are we? I can't, I can't see with a stick in my own eye. That's scripture. Who are we? Now, guys, we have the same thing going on in New York. We have the same thing going on in Maryland. We have the same thing. And I'm going to tell you guys what I said earlier in this speech. I'm going to sit down, Mallory. <laughs> when you have a elected official that has consumed himself or herself in pay to play, listen carefully, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, come on. You are compromised. <laughs> there are some right across in that building right there. Uh -huh. Democrats and Republicans yeah. Yeah. who are involved in pay to play. Senator yeah. Moore, that's why they're scared, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we can't do that, Senator Moore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. yeah, you can't because you're owned by play to pay. Y'all see what's going on. So when you have a person that says, I'm not going to take your money, I don't need your money, let that be you. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm inspiring the great men and women in this room. And if this gets out there, and I, it's to put your name on the ballot and join the great America First movement. Yeah. America First movement is the one guy, one nation, one guy. Not Republican, not Democrat, as you said, but one blood, one nation, under God. That's who we are. That's who we are. So watch this real quick in closing. And, this, and I want everyone to listen to this very carefully, what I'm about to say. Because this is going to apply to everyone in here and everyone watching this video. Or the news tonight. Inclusive. Exactly. <laughs> if you if you're at home and you make yourself a cup of coffee and you walk out and you look out your window and you see your neighbor's house being robbed and looted and you sit quiet and you say, Well, I don't want to get involved. That's you right here. That's you. If you allow this craziness to come in this great city that's been so good to us to allow this spirit to come in here and to unravel everything that, yes, my good friend, the Maynard Jacksons, the Andy Youngs, Dr. Nolan Lavelle, Dr. A.D. King, Dr. King, everyone that helped build this, is this acceptable? No! Well then, by God, we got to do something about it. But guess what? Bonnie Willis ain't the only one. There's many more. We want people that care about Georgia. We want people that love Georgia. We want people that get along with each other, how we landed the world stage that says, man, this city is too busy to hate. We got to bring the world stage to the Olympics here in Atlanta, Georgia.
the largest airport in the world, the great Morehouse, the great AU Center, the great Calvary College, the great Georgia Tech, the great UGA, the West Georgia College, the Middle Georgia, all the universities, the great military bases that we have. We need a positive vision. I'm going to tell you like this, going forward, and I share this because y'all know me. There's many people know me. The news, everybody, my jewelry company for 30 years, everybody's wearing a watch, a ring, or something in this community. And I don't want to call the names because y'all will come after, the, the woke will come after them, and Bruce mentioned your name in the press conference, and they'll try to terrorize them. But we know who they are. How we amend this and how we fix this is that ballot. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to keep fighting. We got to early vote. We got to do everything we can. We got to get the message out and say enough's enough. We don't want to lose our great city and our great nation. God was wrong. 
when she said that when she said people who followed the advice of legal counsel to ensure a free and fair election were actually engaging in a conspiracy to overthrow the election, That's she right. was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> when she said people could not exercise their First Amendment rights to free speech and to petition the government for redress of grievances, she was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And every single day that goes by, the innocent people have to prepare to defend themselves in trial. That is wrong. Yes. <laughs> District Attorney Fonnie Lewis has abused her power of office for partisan political purposes, and that is wrong. Yes. Her wrongful prosecution, which I actually think is a persecution, must be defunded and an investigation must ensue. Okay. Yeah. And if that investigation leads to an impeachment, so be it. The Constitution of Georgia gives the legislature the power of the purse. The Constitution of Georgia gives the legislature the power to impeach. The Constitution of Georgia gives the governor the power to call a special yes. election. Yes. 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 Working together, the legislature and the governor must call a special session and must right this wrong now. Right. We are not going to allow this district attorney's abuse of her office to stop us from standing up for our First Amendment rights. And petitioning our government for redress of grievances. some questions. I'm going to give the mic back to Senator Colton Moore. Um, if there's any from the media or the beautiful faces that are here, um, go for it. Senator Moore. Yeah. Do what's Moore. right. Do what's right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Senator Moore. I got a hand in the back. Yes, sir. Let's be honest. When is anyone going to question this? I'm one of the people who saw fraud in Cobb County. I had to fill out an affidavit. You want to know the governor, who must be like OJ looking for Nicole's murderer, he hasn't called me, his people haven't called me, a state trooper hasn't called me. My phone must not work. It works for everybody else, but it doesn't work for the governor. Yeah, yeah. And then we got what's going on in this county. She is attempting to take away our election rights. That's what, right. what are you going to do? And let's be honest, what prosecutor is going to do the right thing and investigate her? Right. Amen. She should be disbarred. Your, uh, your concerns are the same concerns that my constituents have. And that is why I'm pushing so hard for this special session. That's why I have spent money in some of my fellow senators' districts reminding their constituents that they are sitting on the sidelines, calling themselves conservatives, and not jumping into the action. Because they are discounting the power of their office. They are elected to serve in a legislature that has the oversight capability, but until they jump into the action and call for a special session themselves, then, you know, we live in two the answer, sir. They won't do it until there's three times this room. How many people are on your feed and Facebook, because everybody here is on there, and you see Trump this, Trump that, oh, he's my guy. Where are they? There's some of you. But there ain't a thousand of us. You need to call out your friends. Sir, we're going to move on to the next question. Yes. Mr. Pritchard. Good evening, Senator. My question to you is the state, the state Republican Senate caucus. Uh, you have been called out. There's been a lot of talk in the media. You, you may be expelled from the caucus. You may have broken rules, sanctioned. Has the caucus met? Have you received something official? Uh, are there rules that they claim you broke? Do you think they're going to remove you from the Georgia State Senate Republican Caucus? Well, I think that's a great question. Um, we do go into caucus uh, behind closed doors starting on Monday. Uh, for three days. It'll be the first time that the Senate Republican Caucus has met uh, officially as a caucus since this has went down. My answer to your question and my answer to my fellow Republicans is make my day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. nice. Do they think you broke 
So I, I have asked that question uh, to the majority leader. I have yet to get an answer. They say they're still looking into that. Uh, I think they're uh, saying that maybe I'm impugning one's character, um, but I certainly think that my character has been impugned um, you know, on both sides of that. So obviously, for me, this is much bigger than my relationship with my fellow senator. It's much bigger than the Republican Party. It's much bigger than President Donald Trump. This is about basic fundamental First Amendment rights to question the integrity of an election. Remember, it took 19 days to certify the election results. Any reasonable person with common sense seeing that there's 40,000 affidavits of fraud sitting at the governor's desk, those individuals have a First Amendment right to question that election. Press, if you'd say your name and who you're with, please. Uh, Senator Moore, uh, my name is Jeff Omni. I'm with the Associated Press. Uh, mm -hmm. How many uh, <laughs> signatures do you have on your petition from senators and House members during the first budget session? So there's three. There's three total, which is very disappointing. Yeah. Um, our, uh, our caucus, I think there's 20-something uh, that signed on. Between the House and the Senate? There's uh, Senator Brandon Beach, myself, and Representative Charlie Spur, who you see here. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. Three people with courage. They don't represent the people. That's why. They need to do the right thing. Hold on one second, folks. we got another question. Is there any evidence that Randy Willis could bring that might convince you that any of these suspects are guilty or no. are already decided? Or that was correct? Absolutely not. We all um, asked the same questions. That's right. We, um, what I want to do in my investigation, you know, there's a lot of corruption that seems very obvious. Why in the world did this indictment come out hours before the grand jury ever concluded? Uh, there's a lot of uh, that have been indicted uh, that feel that they were found themselves in the process um, in a very corrupt way themselves, and, and they're willing to come and testify, some of those that are indicted. So, you know... How much coordination has she had with the Department of Justice in D.C.? You know, <laughs> former Speaker of Georgia, Newt Gingrich, uh, claims that he believes that Washington, D.C. was calling Fonnie Willis and saying, expedite this indictment. Those are the types of questions that the legislature needs to be investigated. Right. Right. Uh, there, is, there is no evidence that I have seen. Uh, that would suggest anything of the such. And I don't know if you've all read the indictment, but when I read the indictment, it's the most poorly written indictment um, yeah. Yeah. That, that I think yeah. you could possibly yeah. have. I mean, some of the evidence is nothing more than a tweet making a false statement. Well, when Garbage. somebody honestly believes that the election is stolen, is that a false statement? No, yeah. that's a persecution of their First Amendment right. Senator Paul Valley, WDB Radio. Part of the response from some of your fellow Republicans is the use of the Prosecuting Attorney's Qualifications Commission. Your response to that? Yeah, absolutely. I was the only Republican to vote against it. And the oh. reason why I voted against it was for very reasons that we stand in today. Right. This commission, right, is a bunch of unelected bureaucrats. Right. We as a legislature are giving them the power of the legislature to investigate and impeach and that's why it's being challenged constitutionally. Right. So for all those legislators who say that this is the saving grace, now I certainly hope Fonnie Willis is the first one to go before it. But the, the commission has never met. And the law also states that once the commission does meet, they have to establish rules. And those rules have to be approved by the Supreme Court. So the time frame of which that can be done is, is up in the air. Right. Whereas we know that we have the legislative authority to do the same thing that prosecutorial commission can do. Right. Because think about this. How does a legislature legislate itself out of power? It can't do that constitutionally. So, sure, we have the power. We've granted it to this prosecutorial commission. That's but right. that means we've got the power to do the same thing today. We just we need a special session. Right. Hey, Colton! Right. We don't want to be the plan for the regular session. We are going to continue to call, or I'm going to continue to call, and I'm sure other colleagues are as well, to call for this special session up until we are in session. And at that point, I will motion to amend the budget and defund Fonnie Willis, and we'll have a roll call vote. Yeah, using your logic, 98% of the state legislature representing 98% Who are you with? I'm state, sorry, your name? Stephen Fowler, Georgia Public Broadcasting. 98% of the people in the legislature are 98%.
ninety-eight percent of the legislature representing ninety-eight percent of the state doesn't agree with you that a special session is necessary. No. Wouldn't no. you say that no. your push is infringing on the rights you? of the rest of the state and those lawmakers that have made that decision? Well, I would rephrase your question to the Uniparty does not agree with me, but the constituent. <laughs> No, sir. Okay. Can we get take another media question? We'll come back to you. Uh, Senator, just to follow up on my earlier question, if if lawmakers themselves were to call a special session, there are 102 Republicans in the House and you need 108 signatures. How are you going to convince six Democrats to sign that petition? Well, how do we convince Representative Misha here to leave the Democratic Party and become a Republican? <laughs> going on in Atlanta and to say that Democrats will never come across as being very disingenuous. Why am I not having an argument with Democrats who claim to be for criminal justice reform? Why am I having this argument with my fellow Republican? And that's what keeps me up at night. This is a swamp. Thank you. Leadership. Any questions? Yes, sir, I'm about Hey, Senator, I'm Doug Reardon with Atlanta News First. If this were to happen and you were to get a special session, what would be your understanding of what would happen to the case in Fulton County if it were to happen after this goes to trial? So the special session does nothing to eliminate the case. The case would still continue. The thing that the special session puts a check and balance on is it's able to defund it, hopefully. Yeah. right? And then if you pull the money away, then Fulton County Commission and Washington, D.C. have to decide. Do we substitute all of those dollars? Does the Fulton County citizen think, well, my neighbor on this side is getting robbed, my other neighbor on this side's uh, getting murdered, and I don't see any justice in my community. Do I want my tax dollars funding this political persecution, or do I want my tax dollars taking care of justice? So that will be a, that will be a, a, a question for them. Um, what I also want to do, though, is take advantage of that investigative oversight that we have. Right, the ethics committee of both the Senate and the House under Georgia Code twenty eight dash one dash sixteen has subpoena power, and I want to bring in. Um, Fonnie Willis and other people in her office, in addition to many documents that we need to see and investigate and inquire into the nature of, I would love nothing more than to see some of my fellow senators, who some, are some of the best trial attorneys in this state, cross-examine District Attorney Fonnie Willis in that I can't pronounce the name probably, but Julie Devoe, yeah. she met with uh, uh, Raffensburg uh, a few weeks after the election. Yeah. And she uh, had come up with uh, 384,000 uh, illegitimate yeah. voters on the voter roll. Mm -hmm. And uh, Raffensburg uh, admitted to that sounds about right. There was no further investigation, and allegedly, according to Kathleen Eckerberg, 67,000 of those voters mm -hmm. voted. That's about 14 to 15 percent of the uh, people that are not eligible to vote voting. The news is not out there of true the vote. Do you have that information on hand? No, sir, but the information that you give is uh, very common. Uh, I have received um, probably 50 letters in the last two weeks of people documenting uh, what they saw in the 2020 election to be fraud, and these are Georgians across. This is from Raffensburg's own mouth. He never followed up with an investigation. Right. Two plus two the, is the, sir, not zero. Sir, right? right. To, to answer your question, while all those things were horrendous in 2020, what I am focused on right now is what has become even more horrendous: is where we are taking political prisoners who yes. are questioning the very things that you talk about, mm -hmm. which is taking it to a whole other level of authoritarianism. <laughs> And and that's, why I, that's why finding the votes. Yeah. Right? The votes are lost. They're illegitimate. There was a huge difference. It's sure. about 500% difference with them. Uh, we'll came out we'll, we'll talk about it at the rally here in just a minute, if that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, hey. Kemp didn't have the courage to go to his own convention. He's scared of a t-shirt. Yeah. And we need to find out why it is that other Republicans would hang with that. Why are they hanging with him? You know, so we're talking about authoritarianism. And that's what we see right now taking these political prisoners. But what I think a lot of people in Georgia have missed is during the fish fry, 
That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We had people who were yeah. escorted out yeah. by yeah. armed police officers yeah. for merely expressing their First Amendment rights yeah. and wearing a t-shirt that said paper yeah. ballot, please. Yeah. And this was at the direction of, you know, our yeah. governor, to my understanding, yeah. which yeah. is very disheartening, very oh disturbing yeah. that we live in this state. Very this I'm going to take uh, one more question from the media, and then we're going to have to go. Okay. Are you with the media, sir? Right. Cool okay. show, cool media. Uh, sir, I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to make a point. Uh, if we do not have a First Amendment right, and we do not have an election ability, we take political prisoners for questioning an election, the oath is meaningless. So if the uniparty, Republicans and Democrats, fail on their oath to follow the law, Beyond the state of Georgia, what other measures do we have if we are taken over by enemies, foreign and domestic, and both yeah. parties to cancel our vote, and cancel our voice, who beyond the state of Georgia has authority over the entire corrupt apparatus? There we are. Sir, I'm just like you. I don't have an answer to that. And unfortunately, that's why it's so critical and important that we take action now, because once we lose these rights, we will never get them back. There is nowhere else. To the media, I will be available for interviews after this. Uh, to all of you, please join us at Liberty Plaza here at High Noon. What's the most important action?